Hello, this is Dr. Maria Krenak, and I felt the leading of the Holy Spirit to give you this word today out of John 17, 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Jesus said, you are not of this world. You know, there's so much happening in the world today from politics, the economy, weather stuff, hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, fires, violence. I, I mean, I could go on and on. It just takes one flip of 10 seconds of the news to see the craziness of the world. But thank God we are not of this world. We may be in the world, but we are not of the world, Jesus said. See, the world wants to define you. The world wants to tell you who you are. I just wanted to take a moment today to remind you that the world does not determine you. The world does not define you. God defines you. You are who God says you are today. I don't care what the world system has told you. It's not you. When the world tells you that you're sick with a doctor's report, that's not what God calls you. He calls you healed. When the world tells you that you're poor, uh, uh, God calls you rich. I don't care what the economy says. Don't let the economy define you. And man, it, it, I keep hearing people say, well, I can't, I can't get a house in this economy. Well, you know what? If you need a house for your family, God has a house for you. He's a supernatural God. There's nothing that God can't do. When the world defines you as a victim, God calls you as more than a conqueror. When the world tries to define you as weak, God calls you strong. When the world defines you as depressed, anxious, or whatever the mental diagnosis is, I'm telling you, God calls you perfect in him. Colossians 1.28 says, Him, or Christ, we preach, exhorting every man and every woman and teaching every man, referring to mankind, in all wisdom, that we may present every man, again, mankind, perfect in Christ Jesus. See, the world wants to define you as less than perfect, but here's the truth. You are perfect in Christ. What does this mean for you? It means that you're not a victim. It means that you are not poor. It means that you're not an addict. My God, be addicted to Christ. Be addicted to the word of God. Hallelujah. It means that you're the head and not the tail in every circumstance. I want to remind you today, your circumstance that you're in right now is temporary. Yeah, you're going to be persecuted on this earth, but with your faith in God, put your faith in God, not anything else, in God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Put your faith in God and what he has called you today. Don't put your faith in what the world is trying to define you as. Put your faith in what God has called you. Put your faith in God. Do not let the world or anyone define who you are but God Almighty. Listen, before Moses even stepped into the call of God, he allowed the world to define him. He was rejected by his own people as well as the Egyptians. He allowed that rejection to define him as less. He allowed that rejection to define him as not worthy of love. He allowed that rejection to define his self-worth. And on top of that, after he killed that Egyptian, he allowed his own actions to define him as a sinner. And as he allowed his own issues to define who he was, it put him in the desert for 40 years. Moses was stuck in the desert for 40 years. But when God came to him in that burning bush, and Moses turned towards that bush, or Moses turned toward God, put his eyes upon God, 
Then God called him by name. He said, Moses, Moses. See, God knows your name. You are that important to God. He doesn't call you, hey, you. <laughs> he doesn't say, hey, over there. No, he calls you by name. You're so important to God that he calls you by name. See, and when God came to Moses, he had nothing to say to him about his shortcomings. Think about it. God had nothing to say to Moses about his sin. God had nothing to say to, to Moses about how the world had defined him, about how his own personal issues of rejection defined him. God didn't acknowledge the rejection. God didn't acknowledge what the world had to say about Moses. But instead, God defined who Moses was. God said, Moses, you are a deliverer. And Moses' exact response to that, you find it in Exodus 3.11, word for word, Moses says, who am I? See, Moses didn't know who he was. He had to have God define him. God had to define Moses. God defines him in Exodus 7.1. Look it up for yourself. And God defines Moses personally. And he says to Moses, see, I have made you, Moses, as God to Pharaoh. See, God speaks to the call and religion speaks to the fall. The world wants to define you as less, but God defines you as God to your Pharaohs or as God to your enemies, as God uh, to your temporary circumstance, as God to lack in poverty, as God to that negative doctor's report, as God to anything that's coming against the promises of God in your life. God has defined you as God to every weapon that's been formed against you. It shall not prosper, glory to God. And the Bible says love has been perfected. There's that word again, perfected among us that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. I didn't make that up. As Christ is right now, so are you in this world. In other words, let me translate that for you. God has made you as God to this world. Glory to God. My God, God is so good. As Christ is right now, so are you. I didn't make that up. It's just Bible. The question is, are you going to believe what the word has called you? Are you going to believe what God has called you? It's not what the world calls you, my friend. It's who God has called you to be today. It's not what you can do anymore. It's who God has made you to be. God has made you in his image. He has made you as Christ is right now in this world. This doesn't mean we are God, but it does mean that we are as God to those things that are below, as God to the world, as God to anything that's coming against the promises of God in our life. God didn't leave us as victims on this earth. Hallelujah. I'm so happy about that. But what God calls you, my friend, the world does not. The world does not have the final word on you. The doctor's report does not have the final word word on you. It may be a fact that there's something in those doctor's tests and doctor's results that's in your body, but the, it's not the truth. The truth always trumps the fact. So you don't have to be afraid of facts. You don't have to be afraid of the doctor's report. You can rejoice that, that God calls you healed. Hallelujah. And, and God's word is always greater than the report of the world. Although we are in the world, we live above the world. We are not subject to what the world says, people. We're of another kingdom. It's a higher kingdom, glory to God. We're of God's kingdom now. Be sure to line up your mouth, my friends, with what God calls you today. Call yourself rich, not poor. Don't let the bank account define who you are, my God. Call yourself healed. Don't let the doctor's report define you. Call yourself strong. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Don't let anyone tell you that you're weak. You got Christ in you, the expectation of glory. You got 
Christ in you, the greatest spirit in the universe, the Holy Spirit. Don't let anybody tell you that you're weak. In God, you can do all things. Hallelujah. Call yourself free from addiction and addict. Call yourself addicted to Christ. Call yourself full of joy, not depressed. Call yourself secure in Christ, not anxious. Call yourself mighty in God. Call yourself righteous, not a sinner. Hallelujah. My friend, you are mighty in God. I want to remind you today. You, my God, you're so mighty in God. Hallelujah. And that makes you mighty in the world because you're not subject to the things of the world. You are not powerless, but you are powerful in God, in Christ. Your faith overcomes the world. That's what the Bible says. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. The world does not overcome you, my friend. Instead, you overcome the world. I just wanted to remind you today to remember you are what God calls you. You are not what the world calls you. I love you and uh, look for us on our website to see where we're going to be. Look at our itinerary when we're coming to your area. And this word comes with a teaching. This is a word of encouragement I just gave you, but there's a teaching that goes with it. And I want to give it to you today for free. It's called The Real You. Visit our website for details on how to get this teaching. You are too important to God not to have this teaching, to have it just ingrained in your spirit, man. Glory to God. I love you, and I hope to see you in one of our meetings soon. God bless.